Imagine a world without computers, a world where humanity's knowledge is no longer at your fingertips, a world where a tool that you use every day just no longer exists, a world where you wouldn't be watching this video right here, right now. Computers have penetrated nearly every facet of our lives, but how did they become so ubiquitous? This is the history of the computer. Today, the word computer refers to the devices that we interact with to work, connect, and play. However, it historically described machines that were used in performing calculations with numbers. As part of this video, we'll study the evolution of the earliest devices used for computations and how they became the computers that we depend on today. The abacus was a computational tool used for hundreds of years and is generally considered to be the first calculator. The exact origin of the device is still unknown, but the Sumerian abacus appeared as early as 2700 to 2300 BCE in Mesopotamia. It has been mentioned in numerous civilizations throughout history, including in ancient Egypt, Persia, Greece, China, Rome, and India. Another famous calculator from the past was the astrolabe, which was used to measure the elevation of celestial bodies in the sky. The earliest known reference to one was from around the 2nd century BCE in the Hellenistic civilization. In addition to its value to astronomers, the astrolabe became indispensable for sailors since it allowed them to determine their local latitude on long voyages. One defining quality of modern computers that separates them from simple calculators is the fact that they can be programmed. This allows them to automatically perform certain tasks without continual human input. In the 19th century, Charles Babbage conceptualized the first programmable mechanical computer. His design utilized punch cards to input instructions that the machine would carry out. Unfortunately, it proved too complex to economically produce, and the project was cancelled after the British government stopped funding. The early 20th century saw analog computers develop further, as they were put to work to solve complex mathematical problems. The differential analyzer is the most famous example of this, and was built at MIT by Vannevar Bush in the 1920s. Bush later became involved in the Manhattan Project to produce nuclear weapons, and even inspired the invention of the World Wide Web nearly 50 years before its creation. World War II led to a strong leap in computer technology, as nations tried to gain the upper hand over their adversaries. Computers were primarily built to calculate firing tables, to improve artillery accuracy, and to break enemy code to gain valuable intelligence. The first large-scale digital computer was built by Howard Aiken in 1944 at Harvard University. It was one of the first machines that used electrical switches to store numbers. When the switch was off, it stored zero, and while on, it stored the number one. Modern computers follow this same binary principle. This time period also saw the rise of vacuum tubes, which offered much faster performance than traditional relay switches. The most famous vacuum tube computer, and one considered to be the predecessor of modern machines, was the ENIAC, invented by John Mouchley and J. Presper Ecker. It was the first fully electronic and general purpose digital computer. Despite vacuum tubes offering advantages over electromechanical switches, they had their own drawbacks. They consumed enormous quantities of power, were unreliable, and needed large amounts of space. In 1947, three scientists at Bell Labs discovered that semiconductors 
could be used to more effectively amplify electrical signals. This led to the creation of the transistor, which paved the way for modern computing. Transistors were much smaller than vacuum tubes, used no power unless in operation, and were extremely reliable. William Shockley, one of the inventors of the transistor, continued refining it and founded a company in Palo Alto, California. This would foreshadow Silicon Valley's development into the global hub of computing over the next few decades. In the late 1950s, two teams independently built the integrated circuit, a collection of transistors and other components that can be manufactured on a large scale. This was a major breakthrough that led to computers shrinking throughout the 1960s. In 1968, the General Purpose Microprocessor was invented and was the first example of a computer existing on a single chip. The miniaturization of microchips allowed Intel to release a processor known as the 8080 in 1974. This was used by hobbyists to build home computers. One such hobbyist was Steve Wozniak, who partnered with his friend Steve Jobs to found a company named Apple and begin selling home computers. Although the first iteration didn't sell well, their second machine was sold as the Apple II and gained popularity among home users, schools, and small businesses due to its ease of use. In 1980, the market leader for computers was IBM, and they responded with their first personal computer, also based on the Intel 8080 processor. The main problem with early computers was that they all used different hardware, and programs written for one machine would not work with others. In 1976, Gary Kildall created an intermediary between a machine's software and hardware. This became the first operating system. IBM was eager to implement this into their PCs. However, after Kildall refused to sell to them, they turned to a young programmer named Bill Gates at a company named Microsoft. After convincing IBM to let Microsoft own the rights to its operating system, Gates developed MS-DOS, which he licensed to IBM and eventually other PC manufacturers. This led Microsoft to become the titan that it is today. At Apple, Steve Jobs was determined to make computers easier to use. He was inspired by research that Xerox had conducted in the 1970s, which included computers with a desktop-like screen, mouse, and graphical user interface. Jobs borrowed these ideas and eventually launched the Macintosh, which hurt IBM's position in the industry. These features were eventually implemented by Bill Gates into Windows, which led to a copyright lawsuit in the late 1980s. Microsoft eventually prevailed and Windows became the dominant operating system for home personal computers, where it remains to this day. The 1980s and beyond have seen computers find numerous new applications. They appeared in watches, cars, cell phones, airplanes. They became portable and ever-present. Today, computers are everywhere. And yet, the future remains even more promising. Quantum computers can signal a paradigm shift as humanity can tackle complex problems that today's machines cannot solve. A move away from silicon may reignite the pace of transistor development. Computers will be crucial for us in reaching out into space and exploring the stars. They may have humble beginnings, but no matter what challenges humanity faces, the descendants of that abacus from Mesopotamia will always be alongside us.